So, Boston Red Sox. They've been busy. <laughs> For the last couple of seasons, they've desperately needed some starting pitching in their rotation. You look at what happened last offseason when they went over and they gave a big contract to one David Price. It was a risky contract, but of course with David Price having a history of doing very well in the regular season, they thought, okay, why not give, give him the contract? He's still in his prime. Obviously that didn't turn out so well for them. <coughs> Excuse me. And with that being said, they needed help. Despite having their Cy Young Award winner Rick Purcello, who, <clears throat> by the way, don't tell that to Kate Upton, or she'll go on a five-hour rant on Twitter about how her fiancé deserves it more, apparently, than him. But he came from Purcello, of course. One of the... I want to say worst starting pitchers in all of baseball to Cy Young Award winner in just a span of a year. That's insane. But as a Sox fan, I'm proud of it. Now, you also look at the rest of the starting rotation. You have Stephen Wright, who's a knuckleballer, in case you don't know, which means he throws the ball relatively slow. Yeah, at first it may look like a fastball, but then it just goes really, really slow. And that can be dangerous both ways. It could be dangerous because it's unpredictable that the batter will first strike out. And it also could be dangerous uh, for a walk or batting practice, basically. In the ball the ballpark, especially at Fenway Park, a hitter's ballpark. Then you look at Drew Pomeranz, who in San Diego last year with the Padres in a pitcher's ballpark in Peco Park. Lots of the good numbers. He, he was an all-star. You can make an argument that he possibly, if he stayed in the National League, could have been a Cy Young contender. Gets traded to Boston, hitter's ballpark, ERA bumps up, the L's start popping up. Even when the guy was pitching well, quality starts, three runs or less. Bats were just dead quiet. So, and then you put in Eduardo Rodriguez, who a couple years ago looked pretty good for the Red Sox. Got injured, had Tommy John. Now he's looking sort of like Clay Buckfeld's 2.0, where he can put up some good starts, and then he'll put up some really bad starts, and then he'll get injured. And then he'll miss most of the season. So, as you know, the Red Sox desperately needed another arm in the rotation. Now, for Red Sox fans and the Red Sox in general, they've been interested in mainly two people. One who's sadly no longer with us, Jose Fernandez, and the other, Chris Sale. Now, with that in mind, in order to get Chris Sale, the Red Sox would probably have to give up quite a bit. I'm thinking in my head, Mookie Betts, Jackie Bradley Jr., and that's all you heard all these top baseball insider writers saying, oh, they'd have to give up Mookie Betts. They'd have to give up uh, half their farm system. They'd have to give up Jackie Brother Jr. They had to give up all the above. Now, the Red Sox did have to give up not one, not two, not three, but four prospects, which obviously is a lot. But with prospects, you don't know what you're going to get. You saw late last year, Yuan Mankata, who was part of this trade, he is a guy that many feel like could be a speedy infielder with a bit a lot of power, driving the runs. And of course they gave him that big contract, you know, coming from Cuba. And I think he was a little overwhelmed. So much hype for the guy. He just couldn't really live up to it in a short amount of time. Now with that in mind, the fact that the Red Sox even had to get rid of him and not other big pieces, like I mentioned, Jack and Bradley Jr., Mookie Betts, Alexander Bogarts. The fact they didn't have to get rid of guys like that, or even like a Christian Vasquez, is surprising to me. In order to get Chris Sale. And of course, I'm stoked. 
that the Red Sox got Chris Sale. They're easily now the American League East favorite. Now, the question is, though, how far can they go? Is this still the same disappointing team that got swept by the Indians? I'll get to them later on. Or are they really willing to at least, at least, make the ALCS, a.k.a. the American League Championship Series? Now, of course, I see some Red Sox fans freaking out in a good way. Well, I guess you could say in a crazy way. Saying that the Red Sox have this in the bag. They got this. They got this, man. Yeah. Go to the World Series. They're winning it all. Easy. I disagree strongly. I know. A Red Sox fan disagrees with that. What's going on? You still got the Chicago Cubs. Of course. The defending champions who the way they're built is similar how the Red Sox used to build around their team back in the day. You can thank Theo Epstein for that. You also got Tito, a.k.a. shout-out Terry Francona, the skipper, of course, the manager, the coach, of the Cleveland Indians. They're still young. They're still keeping their core just like the Chicago Cubs are, it looks like, for the most part. So you got to think they're... At least going to be consideration possibly going back to the American League Championship Series. And there's always that team or teams, meaning like one or two, from either the American League or the National League, that you look at in the start of even spring training, and you go, yeah, they're not going to do anything. Or I don't expect them to do anything. And they surprise the living hell out of you. And they quite simply... Make it far. Look at the Cleveland Indians. They always had potential, especially the last couple of seasons. But they always fell out short. They couldn't reach the pl playoffs, the postseason. They were up 3-1 in the World Series. About, a, what, a little over a month ago? You look at the Kansas City Royals a few seasons ago. Did you see them coming into the World Series two straight years and eventually winning it? Probably not. Same with the New York Mets. Yes, they came up short, but they should be proud for making the World Series. Anything can happen. And I know it's 162 games. It's long. It's nine innings. There's no time. It's not timed. So it's like, oh, we could be here forever. But I've been watching baseball since I was five years old, and I've been in love with it since. It's over two decades. I feel old, I you know. But, you know, it should be interesting to see what the Red Sox can come up with. And before I forget, too, uh, the Red Sox did sign former Texas Ranger first baseman, gold-gloving first baseman, Mitch Moreland, who, if you don't know, not only is, as you could guess, by gold glove, be good at fielding, he has power. He can drive in runs. He's a decent at batting average, like 250 round kind of a guy. So, you know, maybe it seems like John Farrell has the option now to put Hanley at DH. Not really good at fielding at first base. Definitely not good at fielding at left field. Can put him at the DH spot. He's still got kind of a hole at third base. Don't know what kind of shape Pablo Sandoval is going to be in next year, next season. Still got Brock Holt who could play literally anywhere on the field, minus, of course, pitching and being a catcher. But... We'll see. This you, you got to put the Red Sox now as a favorite to possibly represent the American League in the World Series. So, and of course, you know I'm not rationing any other team in the American League, especially the American League East. You know the Orioles are always going to have those power hitters. The Blue Jays are always going to love those power hitters. The Yankees they're coming off of dumping every old guy that's ever stepped foot in a Yankee uniform in the last two years, minus CC Sabathia. But, you know, they could be a team within the year or two to possibly be a playoff team. So, And as a Red Sox fan, that goes <clears throat> to me saying that, but I'm not going to lie about it. And with the Rays, 
the, the Rays, what can I say, really? But anywho, that's it for me, you guys. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe down below. Uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, the link is down in the description box down below, as usual. And um, if you want to comment, you know, give your thoughts about this trade or give an about early thoughts about, you know, this upcoming baseball season, feel free to comment down below. So that's it for me. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'm out. Later. Go Sox.